Okay, so I've not started record. Okay, so God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the hair, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creeps upon the earth. So dominion is from the word domain, and it means a territory that you rule over. Kingdom means domain of the king, all right? Kingdom is the domain of the king. So, and the king rules over a territory, all right? So when God said, let us make man, let us make man, man there is male and female, because they let them have, let them, let, the reason why God made you is so you can have rulership over the domain in which he has placed you. And from this text, we see that the heart of God is that we have dominion over all the earth. So this is the heart of God. This is the heart of God for every human being on the face of the earth. Okay. So after God set a desire, a decision that in what he wanted to create, let us make man in our image, God then went ahead and did what? He created man in his own image. In the image of God, created him, male and female, created either. So God created um, male and female in his own image, right? And after God has created them, so God set a desire and intention in verse 26. This is what he wanted to do. And the ultimate purpose of verse 26 is for humans to have dominion over all the earth. That's what God wants. That's his desire. Then after God has set his intention and desire of what he wanted, God went ahead to then create, to create what? The, the humans now in his own image. He created them male and female. That's the creation. Then, but God didn't stop there. God then in verse 28 now impacted to them five levels of wealth. He blessed them. And God said to them, he blessed them by speaking to them. This is the reason why spoken words the spoken word is one of the most powerful uh, tool in the universe the words that you speak out of your mouth is so powerful it's, it, it can change your life what you say out of your mouth can totally change your life but i god blessed them and said god blessed by saying god did not bless by grunting god did not bless by keeping his mouth short god blessed them by saying be fruitful level one multiply level two replenish level three Subdue level four, have dominion level five. Have dominion over what? The fish of the sea, over the fowl of the hell, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So this is where we got the five levels of wealth from. Level one is to be fruitful. Level two is to multiply. Level three is to replenish. Level four is to subdue. Level five is to have dominion. Praise God. So now we go into our text. Last week, I started talking about the five levels of five levels of wealth, and I said the first level, I explained what each of the levels meant, and I said the first level fruitful means, it, it, it's from the word para, it means to grow or to increase, and I said God said to them to be fruitful, he did not say to be seedful, which means the seed that will produce fruit in your life is already in you. You don't need to go to the mountain to go look for it. God has placed a gift on the inside of you. You, do, you cannot be fruitful unless you understand the seed that you have. The, the, the number one thing that you need to find is what is a seed? What have I been given that I've been given to serve the world with? So some of you are good at cooking. Some of you are good at decoration. Some of you are good at creative. Some of you are good at teach, uh, leading people. Some of you are good at compassion. So whatever it is that you believe comes to you naturally, easily, that you, you, you enjoy doing, that is the gift that God has placed in your heart. You don't need to go and and go to the mountain to, to, to begin to search, oh, where is the gift? The gift is already placed inside of you. So for example, I know that in, 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 some of us have done some of the psychometric tests. You know, if you, if, you, if you don't want to, if you don't know where you are to find the gift, you can go and do a psychometric test to try and begin to understand the kind of personality that you have. But essentially, the gift is in you. And once you find the gift, the gift has to be what? Has to be planted because your gift is the seed that God placed in your heart, God placed in your life. So that seed now has to be what? Planted. You cannot become fruitful unless the seed is planted. So you plant the seed and the seed is planted in the ground and the seed is given all this support the seed needs, sunshine, water, and all that kind of stuff. And the seed will get, gets, begins to what? Begins to grow, begins then begins to get fruitful. Now, it is important to know that the seed does not become fruitful overnight. 
you know so, so there's no such thing as overnight success oh that guy achieved overnight success let nobody deceive you it doesn't work like that there are everybody you've seen that have succeeded in any enterprise i've put in some effort along the way to get there it, 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 I've, I've read stories before about um about tiger woods you know he's one of the best golfers in the world right that this guy put in how many hours maybe maybe does 12 hours training every single day, you know, just goes to the feet and keep mastering his, his art, keep swinging, at, keep, keep swinging at it, keep swinging at it. But that is, is taking the seed, the thing that he's good at, right? It is practice and practice and practice, and then begins to become fruitful. The same way I will not expect to have us, um, a feed of, of young tubers next year without planting the seed this year. I have to make sure that I plant the seed this year, and then I, I, I make sure that maybe I put fertilizer there, Put water there. I put allow sunshine to get there, and then in the process of time, what will happen? The the, the seed of yam that I put in the ground, they will begin to sprout, begin to to, to then become fruitful. It's essentially the same way. A farmer will not expect a harvest when the seed has not been planted. Your life you will become fruitful when you identify the seed that God has given you, and you plant that seed in the ground in the, in the domain which God has given you, and then it begins to grow. That is the way it works. That's the way it works. So when you find your gift, plant the gift in the seed, in the domain which you 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 find yourself, and then it will begin to grow. So let's say, let's take a, 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 a political example. Somebody said last time there's, that person said, "Oh, I, I was cooking. You know, I enjoyed cooking. I think it was after the after the session. Uh, Sharon was sharing that testimony with us after the session last week. When when some some people stayed back, she said she was she she has this gift of cooking. You know, she used to cook for people. You know, and all of a sudden, all these people told her, why don't you?" Why don't you um, see, you know, you can cook this thing for yourself and make money with it. And then that's how she turned it into, into a business. And guess what happened? You know, she was able to, you know, employ people working for her. That means that that seed not only became fruitful, began to multiply, right? You know, and she was able to, she even said, you know, she was able to even buy, buy a house from the proceed of what? Of that same, of that gift. But the question is, if she never took that gift, and plant it in this in the in in uh, as a seed in the ground, then it will not become fruitful. So the thing is, if, the question that might then come 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 up is where is the ground? Where is the ground where I plant the seed? If I find the seed, where is the ground where I plant, plant the seed? Well, you already have the ground where you are. Where you are right now, where you are right now, where you are in the domain where God has placed you, there are people that are looking for the gift that you. There are people all around you where you are right now that's seeking the gift that you have. And let nobody tell you you don't have a gift. Let nobody tell you you can't do it. Let nobody tell you oh, who do you think you are. That voice telling you you can't do it or who do you think you are is a voice of negativity that is trying to pull you down. See, listen to me, people of God. You have a gift. You have a seed. That seed must be planted in the ground where you find yourself. When you find yourself in that ground, you plant that seed in that same ground and which means you, the people that are around you already that need your gift, you begin to make yourself of value to them. As you begin to make, add value to these people's lives, guess what? They begin to spread your, your word around about the, how good you are. And that gift then becomes fruitful. Okay, so fruitfulness is about finding the seed, planting the seed, growing the seed, and the seed becomes fruitful. Number two, we look at multiplication. Multiplication essentially means Robo in Hebrew language, and it means abundance or great increase, which means that if I have a field of, of um, a field where I've planted uh, my seed of yam tubers, um, and it might be maybe five rows, six rows, as I begin to multiply, it means that row, that, that six, those six rows then become 12 rows, become, be, they will become 15 rows or 20 rows, you know, as be, that, there's an expansion in there. An example that, that came to me easily is like, let's, again, let's take Sharon's example. She has a gift. The gift is a seed that, that, that is of cooking. She identified the gift, which is a seed. She planted the seed in the ground, master herself, get better, learn how to do cooking, take cooking classes, um, get mentors, get help along the way. And then, she, you know, she begins to serve that gift to people. And then as, as more orders start to come, she multiplied. How? By getting other people to come and help. Maybe she hired other cook to support her. That is multiplication. Or you might be a, me a mechanic. You're good with 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 um with um with engine. You like repairing stuff. And invite that gift as a seed, plant it. You begin to serve people with it. 
People begin to call your name and say, oh, this guy's very, this guy's very good. Before you know it, what happened? You, you open up a shop, you hire more mechanics to come and help you. That gift is now being multiplied. And I said something about, about multiplication that is absolutely important to create a system. You know, because in order for us to replenish, replenish is the third level of wealth. In order for replenishing to happen, you have to have a system. You have to have a system whereby things that are being done manually by you cannot be done automatically. Why? Because you cannot, you cannot expand the way you ought to expand if everything depends on you. If everything depends on you, that nothing gets to happen in your business except you get to make the decision, then it's difficult for you to expand. So um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a level of uh, strategy in the strategy world called um, uh, a intro, 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 entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship means, so you have entrepreneurship, you have entrepreneurship. Inter entrepreneurship means you have people in your company that come, that come up with ideas on how things should be done and you give them a platform to be able to express themselves and they get a take, they get a take of, of what you create from that, from that idea. So for example, many years ago, when I was looking for, for uh, Vodafone Global, uh, based in Newbury in the UK here. Uh, I, I used to work part of, part of this, uh, I was part of strategy and architecture de department. And what, what that department does essentially is every single project in, in Vodafone has to come through my team. And my team would then sit down around what they call a, a review board, uh, an architectural review board. We just look through every idea that's presented and see whether it has merit or it doesn't have merit. Any idea that has merit that we think, hey, this is gonna fly, this aligns with our overarching strategy, we, we approve. And then they will then go and get funding. So, and what Vodafone does, Vodafone um, gives like 50,000 pounds seed fund to start a project and, and create some sort of like uh, a prototype to see how it's gonna work. You know, and essentially you bring an idea to the table, the idea is approved by the management, you get some funding to actually work on that idea. And you know, if that idea flies, I don't know whether eventually Vodafone gives them some money out of it or not, but that's entrepreneurship. That kind of company will always grow because that company has created an incentive that ensures that people that are in the company that are bringing ideas to the table get remunerated or get acknowledged and awarded for the idea that they bring to the table. So you might be here, you might say, okay, I don't wanna be an entrepreneur. I don't wanna have a business of my own, but you are working in a company. Think of what can I do differently in this company that will set me apart from the rest of the people? All right? When you begin to do that, and you begin to do things that, is, 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 that other people are not doing, every, every, every other person tries to laze about and put their legs up and not want to walk, but you say, no, you know what? I'm a different guy. I'm going to do something differently. And you begin to put yourself forward. Trust me, you are going to go far in that industry. Now, but let's even say, let's even say something bad happens that company where they lay people off and you got laid off. They didn't see your value. They you got laid off. Do you know? Because you have put yourself forward, because you have understood that you're a person of value, what will happen is ultimately somebody's going to pick you up. Somebody's going to pick you up. And then that's how this is going to change for you. You know, I read a story about Microsoft, right? Microsoft used to work for, I think we used to work for IBM, IBM back in the days. And he had this idea for, for, for uh, what we now call Microsoft. And he brought that idea to IBM and he told him this is never going to work. They told me this is not going to work, but it was an idea that I brought to the table. They said, what's, what's going to work? The guy went back to his garage, created the product and made, and made it work. And later, my, IBM came and <laughs> came and told, told it, it came and, and bought that thing from him. Why? Because the idea was given to him and he worked on his idea. So let nobody dumb down your idea and say, your idea is rubbish, cannot work, cannot work. Don't, don't, don't allow them to do that because God has placed that seed in you. Now, the other thing I want to say is this. You do not need anybody. You do not need anybody to validate you because God did not give them the seed. God gave you the seed. Therefore, work with God and work on your, on your gift and make it work for us. So multiplication is about replicating yourself. I gave the example last week of Moses, that Moses himself, God took the spirit out of Moses and gave it to 70 people, 70 elders in the camp of Israel so that they can help him to carry all the work. It's going to get to a point where you see that you have, as it begins, as it begins to get fruitful, you get to the point where it's, it begins to multiply. You cannot be the one to, to be doing everything. Therefore, you get a, a system in place so other people can pick up the work for you and get work for you so that you can begin to shift into something else. Number three, replenish. Replenish is to bring something to its intended purpose. So God wants the earth to be replenished, which means the earth has 
as the earth, the earth has many rivers and things on, on, on the earth that God, God has put in there to make the earth come to its intended purpose. It means you have to learn the process of distribution. When you uh, have a gift, the gift becomes fruitful and that gift you multiply it, right? Uh, and it, it, it's something that then gets multiplied multiply through a system, or a system that you put in place. The next thing is distribution. To make things go viral, you have to find a way to distribute. How do you distribute the gift that God has given to you? It is through a process called partnership. Partnership. Partnership is a profound way to distribute what you have so that, you know, some people take you, 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 what you are lacking, some other people that have what you, what you don't have, Will take what you don't, what what you don't have, what you we take what you have, and there'll be a kind of sharing arrangement between the two of you, so that your product can get in front of people far faster. In the in the marketing world, in the marketing world, there's something called affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is a process whereby you know somebody has a product, maybe you have an audience, you have this, you have fifty people that have, that have trusted you because you have served them very well, and let's say for example, right now you are somebody who is into. Uh, you are into let's say you you cook food yeah you cook food and if people like your food they recommend your food that means you've taken your seed it has become fruitful and it's got to the point where your your, your food that you're cooking now you have other people that are helping you to cook because you keep getting these large and large orders right so that is multiplication right okay you got up working for you helping you to cook and all that but the thing is that you need to replenish so how do you distribute that you could form into a partnership for example, with people, uh, with some of these people, for example, that are um, that are that are selling organic food or they're selling raw food, you can go into partnership with them and say, everybody that comes through through your um, your shop or your enterprise that are trying to buy X, Y, and Z food, um, you know, if you refer them to me and they buy from me, I'll give you a percentage of the money that is spent with me. So what you're doing there is kind of partnership. So the people that are selling the raw food or the garlic food now, when somebody comes to them, um, they will just say, by the way, if, in case you need somebody to help you to cook this kind of meal or you know prepare this meal for whatever you want to do, I know I know one person who can kind of do this for you. And then they refer the person to you, to, to you, the person you know uh, comes to you, the person spends X amount of money with you, you go back to the person that um that referred them and give them a token. For, for, for sharing their, their network with you. So to replenish means you have more than one sources. When, before something dries up, another door opens. Before something dries up, another door opens. And a good way to do that is through distribution. And distribution comes through a form of partnership where you can partner with other people that have what we call supplementary products or supplementary service to what you have, all right? Therefore, you can then use that to promote uh, and, and, and get your product to, to regions where you normally not get to uh, otherwise. It is absolutely important to understand. It's a it's a spiritual principle. It's a spiritual principle. If you look at um, most, most the, the, major, the the top companies in the world, they understand partnership. Think about it this way: In my house here, I have uh, I have a TV here. Let's say the TV is Samsung TV or or is it is a um, uh, it's a Sony TV. But you know. These TVs are smart TVs, right? And this smart TV is now you've got Netflix on it, you got Amazon Prime on it, you got all this other app on it. Why do you think Samsung or Sony TV allow Netflix and Amazon Prime to put their product on their TV? It's a partnership arrangement. They 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 you put their they put their app on the TV. Everything that everything that somebody buys a TV, which is an hardware, it was a hardware. They need, they are buying that TV because of what? They want to watch something on it, you know? So when they put Netflix on it, they put Amazon Prime on it, there's some sort of revenue share that goes behind the scene that you might not be aware of. Every single time you see somebody promote somebody else's product, they are not doing because they love the person, usually. They're doing because there's some sort of arrangement whereby you say, okay, um, you know, I'll promote your product to this person. I'll give, I'll get a percentage of what you make out of it. And that is the way these things work. So to be to replenish the earth, you, we need to uh, be very good at uh, you know a kind of distribution. How to distribute, understand how distribution works. 
Okay, so we then went into subdue. I think subdue is where we left last time. Um, and in subduing, subduing is pronounced kabosh. And kabosh means to bring into bondage, to bring into bondage, which means to make something to, to serve you, to make something to serve you. Now, the key thing to understand here is you are already in an advantageous position because the gift that has been given to you is given to you so that um, so that you can you you can serve the world with that gift. The gift was not given to you for you to play around with it. The gift was given to you so that you can serve the world with it. God gave you a gift so that that gift you can use to serve the world. Now, there's a scripture that I found very very compelling is the book of First Corinthians chapter three verse twenty one. The Bible says. Don't be proud of your allegiance to any human leader. For actually, you already have everything. You already have everything. It has already been given for your benefit, which means, think about it that, that statement very carefully. It means that everything already belongs to you. Oh, but at times you might say, but I don't really have anything. But God is saying to you, child of God, everything already belongs to you. Why? Because everything belongs to Christ. And because you are in Christ, everything belongs to you. Now, that opens up a new pattern of thought. Because what that essentially is saying is this. If everything belongs to me, I am not moving, I am not thinking from a position of lack. I'll say that again. I am not moving or pushing from a position of lack. I'm not thinking the resources of the world is not going to be enough. Many years ago, I was teaching I want to discuss it with my, to my children. And my, 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 my last child says something that I find today very profound. She said that, that nobody wakes up in the morning and thinks, oh, the hair that I breathe will not be enough. It will finish. Let me hold it. Let me just go and hold it because it's not going to be enough. Nobody ever does that. Why? Because God has placed so much abundance in the world that you have more than enough. And the very premise of being to stop doing things is to know, is to come from a prosperity, prosperity consciousness. It's to come from a consciousness that says there's more than enough to go around. I was talking to a couple uh, two days ago, one of my fam our family friends, and I said something I said, if you take a million birds and throw them into the sky, the, the, it is possible for every single bird to fly in that sky without touching one another. Why? Because the sky is big enough. To subdue, to bring something to, to, to its intended purpose in your life, please and please and please do not think of a limited resource. Do not think of things are not enough. Do not think of things are gonna go out of fashion. Do not think of, oh, the resource of the world is going to, going, going to go away. I will not have enough for myself. Do not allow the devil to get you into a mindset of lack consciousness. The Bible makes us to understand, in the book of Genesis chapter 3, that what made Adam and Eve to fall was because they focused on lack. God said to them, of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the garden, of the, of, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. But God said, of, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. Every and freely. They, those are abundant words. Abundance, abundance words. What's leading with abundance? God said, of every tree, every single tree. So let's say there are 100 trees in the garden. God says to them, 99 of these trees, you can touch it, you can eat it, you can do anything you like with it. But one tree, don't go there. And the devil said, came to them, tell them and said, oh, you know that one tree that God said, you should not touch or you should not eat of it? God is holding something from you. God knows that the day in which you eat of this tree, you are going to be like God. Oh, by the way, you are not already like God. By the way, you are lacking something in your life. Because you are lacking something in your life, therefore, you know what you need to do? You need to reach out to this tree and take out of this tree so that you can become complete. And therefore, therefore, when you take of it, you'll be like God. But hang on a minute. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28 that we read just now, God said, they will, God said, let us make man in our image. They are already like God. God already made them like themselves. But the devil, the devil said, it makes them to think that they are not like God, that they are lacking something in their lives. Get what happened? They began to focus on that lack. And because they focus on lack, they missed the way. To subdue in your environment, carry a consciousness. 
that all things are yours. That all things are yours. That everything in this world already belongs to you. Now, if you if you are if you are going to go into a business and you and, and God tells you, now this is a profound example that God gave me. God said to me, if I walk into your church and I lay hands on you and I say to you, from this day forward. Everything you say out of your mouth, every word you speak out of that is going to come to pass. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? You're going to start to say the things you want. You're going to start to say, oh, I thank you. Thank God for this. Thank God for that. You're going to start to confess out of your mouth what you want. But you know, that statement that God made, he already said in the Bible, Mark 11, 23, 24, he says, whatsoever you say, you shall have what you say. He said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe you have received them and you're going to have them. Whatsoever you say is what you are going to get. So carry this consciousness that everything is already yours. Everything is already yours. So you are not, don't move from a lack consciousness. When you, when you walk in lack, you know, you don't see abundance. All you see is there's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough. And if the pre predominant conversation in your mind is there is not enough, there's 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 not enough, you know what you are doing? You are conditioning your mind that there's not enough. And your mind, all he hears day and night is, there's not enough. And because that's all your mind hears every day, your, it will come out of your mouth that there's not enough. It becomes a cycle. There's not enough in your mind. There's not enough out of your mouth. And guess what? The Bible says, every seed produces after its kind. The words of your mouth, the words of your mouth are seeds planted in the ground. And those seeds will produce after their kind. And God says, in order to bring something into bondage, in order to bring the resources, of, resources around you to serve you, start from the place of what? Of the fact that already, everything is already yours. Praise God. All right. Level number five. Level number five. Dominion. Dominion is pronounced rodo. It means to rule or reign as a king. To rule or reign as a king. Now, how do kings rule or how do queens rule? By commands. By commands. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, the Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And we may say unto him, what do you do? To rule as a king, to dominate like God wanted to dominate, you need to master, the number one thing you need to master, people of God, is the, uh, is the word that you speak. The word that you speak. The words coming out of your mouth. Speak like somebody who knows he or she has authority. Carry a consciousness of this royalty. You belong in a royal family. Carry that consciousness. How do you do that? When you wake up in the morning, see yourself already wearing your royal regalia. See yourself in your mind's eye, you know, with, with your... With your um, uh, which, which, which your real regal, when your real regalia, see yourself, you know, with a crown on your head, if you can do that. See yourself walking with that authority. See yourself that when you speak, those things come to pass. Now, this is a dangerous exercise to do, but it will help you because when you start to do that, it means that now you have to be careful that you don't say, uh, you don't start to say some nasty words out of your mouth because now you're saying to yourself, what I speak always come to pass. So be careful what you say. Why? Because you are royalty. Kings rule by degrees. Therefore, what you say out of your mouth must come to pass. But how, how, how will it come to pass? You must speak with authority. The way God explained this to me is this. If you ever say uh, the king, the king, let's say you know, King Charles now is the king of England. Um, let's imagine he, he constantly doubts himself. He doesn't believe he's a king. He doesn't speak like a king. He, he vacillates uh, when, he, when he's coming to uh, where he's meant to take authority, you just begin to look like uh, what's going on here. Even though the person is a king, even though the king has a king, because he, he didn't, he's not acting like a king. You're not speaking like a king. Nobody's going to take him serious. So you as a child of God, carry this consciousness that God is in you. God loves you. And because God is in you, God loves you. He has already given you authority. Authority means you are ruling under the authority of God himself. So when something is not working well in your life, what do you do? You begin to speak of it. Why? Because the highest level of wealth is your ability to use your words to command good things to come into your own life. So we give you the example of somebody who has a gift of cooking. The seed is planted. The person cooks for people. 
becomes fruitful. That's level one. Level two, the becomes gets to, to increase in the service that they are doing because they're doing such a good job. They get a lot of orders. They get other people to come and help them to deliver it. That's multiplication. Level three, to replenish. To replenish, we get into what? We get into partnership, right? We, we, we get into partnership, right? We, we, we have this mindset, okay, we need to get this in, into partnership. We begin to get other people to work with us. Then um, to subdue, to bring everything under our control, to be, get them to serve its internal purpose, carry this consciousness, everything already belongs to you. Everything already belongs to you. So it's that mindset, everything already belongs to you. What will happen is you are forming alliances and partnerships that will make things work in your, in your space. So now um, a person who is trying to subdue Bring something to internal purpose. Like, how can I take this gift of cooking to serve its internal purpose? What's its internal purpose? The internal purpose of your gift is to glorify God, right? So now you are using your gift not only to make money, but to serve other people, to advance the kingdom of God, to make the world a better place. You are bringing your gift to serve the intended purpose that God has for your gift. The intended purpose for the gift that God has given you is to bring glory to God Almighty. So you take that gift, you are known in your, in your field as somebody who does an excellent job. You are known in your field as a person of integrity. You are known in your field as somebody who follows through when he says he's going to do something. You know, when we begin to hear about you, they hear about you and say, ah, this person always does what he says he's going to do. You know what they will do? They bring glory to God. It brings glory to God because they begin to say, ah, that, I, want to, I want to work with that person. Now you have a reputation. Your reputation precedes you. People want to work with you because they know that you are trustworthy. They know that you are reliable. All right, so you are making your gift to work its intended purpose. Level five, dominion. In that field that God has given you, in that, with that gift that God has given you, you strive and do all you can to be the best in it, to be the best, in it, to dominate that market. And one of the ways you can dominate is not just about, you know, your actions, is about the words you speak. Now here you become an authority. You might you might write blogs. You might write a book that people begin to say, "Hey, when that guy writes, everything he says is an authority in there." Now you begin to influence other people's minds. Now here you have you have risen to that point where you are an authority in that field. And listen, people of God, one of the easiest ways to become an authority is to write a book. You can write a book based on the gift that God has given you. Get a book out. And they begin to quote you. When people begin to quote you, quote the things that you said in your book, you see that you're having authority, you're having dominion in that market that God has given you. So God said he has given you power over all things, right? So how do we reign as a king? We reign as a king as we carry this consciousness of the fact that, you know, we are God's children, God loves us, and all things are working together for our good. So the five levels of wealth is one, fruitful, two, multiplication, Three, um, replenish the earth. Three, subdue. And number four is dominate. All right, I'm going to stop, take a stop here because I think I've spoken for about half an hour with our break. Apologies that I needed to get that out. Is there any question, any comment on this before I continue? Hi, everyone. So I have a question. Can you give us some tips on something practical on how to get to the point of believing that we really do have everything, that everything has been given to us? So I believe it in my head, mm. but I guess me, I'm struggling a little bit to, to believe it to the point of action. Okay. All right, so let me rephrase that. So the question here is, um, when the Bible says all things are yours, right? All things are yours. I said, okay, I believe everything is mine. But it seems like I'm believing it in my head, right? And it's not, it's not something that has not become um, something that has become a belief system that then dictates yeah. Exactly, that's a good exactly. question. That's a very good question. Now, um, we will never behave inconsistent with our predominant thoughts. 
I'll say that again. We will never behave inconsistent with our inconsistent with our most predominant thought, which means how we act is based on what we have chosen to believe. Now, remember, belief is a thought. Belief is a thought. The question is how the belief of our heart, how did we get to become a belief system? The belief of our heart gets to become a belief system through years and years and years of programming that we have chosen not to uh, challenge. Let me give you an example. Suppose, um, we're talking again, we're talking prosperity here now. Suppose somebody is growing up in a church where they say, um, money or the love of money is what the Bible says is the root of all evil. But suppose somebody goes in the church where they say, money is the root of all evil. That person has had it for 10 years. Every single time that person tries to venture to, to, to try and make money, the, pers the person's heart immediately sabotages that person's effort. The, person's, the, the heart says, no, no, you can't do that. If you do that, you are going to evil way, so you can't do that. And then the person stops. The person gets so frustrated, like there's a desire in their heart to make money, but they don't want to make money because they don't want to offend God or walk against God. And then they get say, ah, I can't do that. And that's the condition. That condition it came because from a young age, that person has been told money is evil, money is evil, money is evil, money is evil. And because the person has been told this money is evil, money is evil, money is evil from a young age, when the person was hearing these things, the person did not have a filter a filter system in the person's heart to say, no, that can't be right, I refuse it. So how do we use, how do we make take the, 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 the truth of God's word to replace this false belief system? How do we do that? It is true, taking the word of God, practically taking the word of God, right? And meditating on it. So in the case of somebody who, who thinks money is evil, what the person needs to do is go into the Bible and say, what did God really say about money? What did God really say about prosperity? What did God really say about this and that and that? The person reads that. I also advise the person then does what? Write out some affirmations, some truth based on what the person has read in the Bible, which is the truth, and personalize it. So, an example of, 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 of an affirmation that somebody can say here, that, that somebody can find out here is, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and has no sorrow, which means the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. So instead of saying money is evil, now I say, oh, if it's a blessing, therefore it's not evil because it's coming from God. So you can say, wake up in the morning, Blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow to it. Now, when you say that statement, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich. You know, now you're not saying the blessing of the Lord make it rich. You are personalizing it. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. When you make that statement, the very first time you say it, you are going to shrink because it comes against everything you have believed over the years. The way you know that you have believed something. It's when you say it and you don't feel if a, a, a negative reaction in your body, then you have believed it. So, for example, if I say, Tokes, your name is Tokes. When you hear, when I call you Tokes, you don't have any, emo any negative emotional feeling around because you have believed that that's your name. You know it's your name. You know, and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know that's your name. So, there's no emotional reaction that is like, mm, what's that? That can't be right. So, the very first time you're trying to rewire your mind to believe the truth of what God said, I'm telling you, you are going to have a challenge because you, if you have, if somebody has 10 years or 15 years to believe a lie, the moment you start to talk about the truth, it's not going to happen immediately. The moment you start to say it, you are going to bark at it. You're going to, oh, that can't be right. I remember.
color can you hear me can hear you i think it was him who went off i thought it was me oh i thought it was me too <laughs> Okay. okay. So my my stop dropped. Or my internet dropped. Or can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 But God, God, how can you say you are lying if you are speaking my word? And that statement alone from God is what I call pattern disruptors because that. Stepping from God, this is disrupting the thought process that start to come in and say, you are lying by me. So the very first step is to make a statement, an affirmation, a belief system. It comes through a process of affirmation repeatedly, not something you do once, repeatedly. So you take the word of God for it, for what you are believing God for. You find the word of God, you personally, personalize it. The blessing of the Lord makes me rich. Onto it. You say that over and over and over and over and over. Now, to really make it a belief system, I would suggest strongly, I would suggest strongly that you cut off any other conversation. So um any any association that promotes poverty, any association that promotes lack, any conversation that that we come back that will come back into your heart and put this information in there, cut it off. Because if you don't, the Bible says a little level, level the whole up. Now, remember, because you're trying to rewire your mind, you're trying to rebuild your mind in the pathway that God is leading you, you got to make sure you, are, you keep your mind focused on this truth. truth. So, practically speaking, the first step is to get that thing to become a belief system, is to expose your mind to the truth of what the word of God says over and over and over and over. So, when you're driving, a reaction the affirmation when you're bathing <laughs> the affirmation when you're cooking when you're sleeping saturate your environment with this truth then one day when you say the blessing of the lord makes me rich and has no sorrow you will not have a negative emotional reaction because it will have become a belief system beliefs beliefs of the heart are formed through repeated repetitive exposure to certain information what the, 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 the one of the greatest challenges of the mind is that the mind um, is, I'm sorry, the heart is in between the spirit and the soul. And the spirit speaks, the soul also speaks. So, and the heart, the heart responds to the one that speaks loudest. So, even though your, your head has believed that God wants you to prosper, the, your head has believed that God, you know, has designed you for success. Your head has believed it. Enough for it to become a heart knowledge. It is true, repetitive. You need to re renew your mind, rewire your mind by affirming that truth over and over and over and over again. That's step number one. So when you affirm it, when you open your mouth and say, the blessing of God makes me rich and has no sorrow, what that statement does is you are going to hear it. You're gonna hear. It. Once you hear it, it it goes into your heart, right? And it begins to change the image that you have in your heart before. You begin to get replaced by this this new image that the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has a sorrow to it. So now in your mind, you begin to visualize and see yourself becoming rich without sorrow, becoming rich without any form of sorrow in your life. You begin to see that picture. All right. Now, when you see that picture, now you've heard it, it's become a belief for a period of time, automatically you will then begin to act. You begin to have to take action, what I call prosperity actions. Actions that then begin to say, oh, we cannot spend money on this thing that we don't have. We cannot begin to just begin to take credit for taking credit sake. Uh, you can begin to take actions like, um, you know, think, looking for investment that, will, that, will, that you can put some money in that will not allow you to waste money. Trust me, I've wasted a lot of money in, in this journey. You know, I've wasted so much money because I haven't followed the process. But I, but but what God is teaching us here, he's saying, listen, if you follow this process, it's going to work for you. So the, the, the way God has ordained success to happen based on the Bible is in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. God said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you will observe to do 
according to all that is written therein. And then you will make your way prosperous and then you have good success. So there are three levels there. Level one, speak the word. Level two, think the word. Level three, the word. So as you are, as you affirm this truth about the, the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow over and over and over and over again, what will happen is the, the, the words you hear, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, those words you are saying will go into your heart and paint new pictures in it. It's not going to happen overnight. It might take two months, three months, four months, five months, but to increase the intensity of how the pictures is written quickly in your mind, do it regularly. Maybe every one hour, every five hours, go back and do your affirmation over and over. Don't just do it one day uh, on Sunday and don't do it until next Sunday. Do it repeatedly over and over and over and over and over. And the more you do it, the more new layers, new information, new truth is being written in your heart. Now, the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart comes the issues of life, which means your heart determines the boundaries of where your life goes to. So as you put this word of God now in your heart, you spend new pictures in your heart. Then your heart will go and begin to find, begin to instruct you on what you need to do to take prosperous actions that will give you prosperous results. That is the practical way that I think we can take. You know, obviously it means, it might also mean, again, not having, not hanging out with the wrong kind of people, having the right kind of association and so on and so forth. You know, so that's the way uh, the you, you can practicalize that. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. Is there any other question here? Pastor, um, you just mentioned the three levels. What was the third one? Because the reception went a little bit. What was the third one? So there are five levels, yeah? Mm -hmm. One is two is multiply, three is replenish, four is subdue, and five is dominate. But when you were speaking there, you talked about three levels. I can't, I couldn't hear what you said probably because the reception kind of went when you were explaining to Tobes. Oh, I, I, what I was saying, to, to, yeah, what I said was success from God's point of view, according to God's formula for success, if there's such a thing called formula, yeah, is yeah. based on Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Yeah. And 1, verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. or you shall meditate on it day and night mm -hmm. so that you can observe to do according to all that is written therein and mm -hmm. then you will make your way prosperous and have good success right okay and what that is saying to level one is this book of the Lord shall not depart of your mouth you shall talk the word for yeah. anything for anything at all you believe God for find the promise of God in the Bible and talk about it over and over and over. Remember, the more you talk about it, what are you doing? You are replacing the image in your heart with the, with the truth of the word of God. So talk about it. Number two, he said, you shall meditate on it. Think about it. So when you talk about it, it creates pictures in your heart, creates new pictures in your heart. Those pictures in your heart will begin to what? Uh, you know, you begin to meditate and begin to visualize, right? What does that what does that really look like in, in you know when it is true in my life right so that's meditate on the word and then as you meditate on it it becomes a belief system because belief system are formed through repeated repetitive um uh exposure to information whatever information you are exposed to constantly that you have not re uh, Rebought, uh, re or you've not challenged, you've not said, you know, this cannot be for me. Any version that you you are supposed to repeatedly, it will become a belief system if you don't challenge it. Okay. So, so, so then level three is to to do. Which is you are doing the word. Yeah. Okay. So if you hear the word and you don't do the word, then the word is still not benefit because the Bible says in the book of James, I think James chapter one verse twenty says, if you are religious, uh, no, say it said be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving yourself. Generally saying, if you hear only the word and you don't do the word, you have deceived your own self. So the third step is to do the word. And doing the word means do what God says you should do in a situation, right? So if I'm believing God 
for because we're talking of prosperity here now. I, mean, I give the example of like the blessing of the Lord makes me rich and has no sorrow. You personalize that. You talk about that over and over. What that is doing is is, is planting in your mind that the blessing of the Lord will make you rich. That is what is planting over. It's, so it's going to be planting the picture of richness, a blessing in your own heart, and that picture that is pl planting we displays any other picture maybe picture of lack or not enough whatever it will displace it so then, when we say the blessing of the lord makes me rich are we talking about rich as in wealth or are we talking about rich as in generally just prosperity in life whatever whatever richness means to you okay it's all and, part, it's all part of what, what you get the, the the i told you before in genesis, in genesis chapter one yeah, in chapter one, God mentioned a word seven times. Mm. And that word that he mentioned seven times in chapter one is very important because that word is, is key to understand what God meant. When God said, and it was good, and it was good, and, it was, and that word is prosperity in the Hebrew language. That, that's that's fundamental funda, 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 funda of that. And number seven is number of completion, which means God said it seven times in creation to say prosperity is good for you. So Whatever prosperity means, it might be, you know, like I said before, prosperity, prosperity is not just about money, it's about, it's just a complete package, right? Essentially, you know, you are coming to your place, what God has called you to do. You are living your life, you know, based on what God has called you to do. You are living, you, you, you're not having riches and then there's sorrow in your life. You know, like things are falling apart. Because somebody has all the money, for example, but the person lost their family. That is not God. You see what I mean? So the, the kind of blessing that God wants to give to you has to be such that it brings harmony. It has to be such that it's peaceful, right? It has to be such that it's, there's got shalom in it, right? So I don't know if that, if that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. So, so just for a practical example, say you got a job and it's the job that you absolutely believed God for and it's everything you want, perfect. it's perfect in any shape or form. You start, mm. you start experiencing issues. Yeah. So the way to deal with that is to go back to the word go back to what god says and mm. basically just begin to speak those words so it's not that that so i guess my question is not that that god that blessing of that job hasn't come from god it's more you have to go back to the word and find what god says about prosperity about you and just begin to speak those words it is that let, what we're saying? yeah okay let's let in practicalizing let's take it a step further right so mm. God give you a job. It's, it's your dream job, right? Mm -hmm. It's your dream job. Everything is okay. Now, for the record, God never said you will not have challenge in this life. Yeah, it is It is not written in the Bible. Jesus Christ said, in this world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, right? So you go into that job and you have a challenge. Question, How? why did the challenge come? The challenge might come because maybe you, you yourself need to improve your human relationship. Yeah? It is possible. I don't know the reason why the challenge came, right? Challenge might come from there. Challenge might come because, you know, the adversary is trying to chase you out of the job. You know what I mean? I don't know. So, but the thing is that, let's say, for example, you've examined your, examine your service, find out that you're not a cantankerous person. You're not also causing problems for people. You are you are building good relationship. You you have nothing in your heart that you have contributed to this matter. Then you have nothing to worry about. Then what you need to do is begin to take authority. Remember, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right? They are mighty to go to the putting out of strongholds, which means when you have an attack in the office, don't just think, oh, you're just a human, be just someone, they don't just they don't just like me. There's a spiritual connotation that you that you need to think about. And then you can take authority over it. You can say, no, I refuse for you to, to, to chase me out of here. I, I forbid it in Jesus' name. Look, I've had a situation before when I was working in Bulgaria, when I had some serious issue at work, and I said to God, I'm just going to resign. And God said to me, if I make you a CEO, CEO of this company, to take care of this, he's going to abandon the ship and run away. And I said, what am I going to do? And God said to me, I will never forget. I was in the hotel, he said to me, did I not say to you, the weapons of our warfare are not cannot, but managed to go to the putting out stronger. I said, yes. I said, so now, from today, begin to pray for your people. So I started to pray for them. I started to pray for everyone in that office, everyone in my team. I said, even people that cost me problems, I started to pray for them. And within a short period of time, things began to turn around, right? So essentially what I'm trying to say is at times, you are in your place where God has placed, given to you, and the adversary shows up. It doesn't mean that the place is no longer the place of blessing. It's just that adversary shows up. It's, it's possible that even you are in a lineup for a promotion, the adversary yeah. shows up. Think about Joseph, right? We, we, we ran through the story of Joseph for many 
uh, months in the church, right? And I said, Joseph was doing the right thing, right? He was doing the right thing. Still, he got thrown into prison, right? He got thrown into prison for doing the right thing. So at times you might, if you face a challenge, it's not necessarily because you have done something wrong. It could be the enemy is just out to get you, right? Or it could be that you've done something, you're not, you're not forming good relationship with people. If you're not forming good relationship with people, then work on yourself to form good relationship with people. But if you know you're doing the best, you form good relationship with people, it's not, the fault is not from you and you still have the challenge, then you know definitely it's not a human being somewhere, it's the enemy trying to just frustrate you. And what do you do? You take authority. You stand and say, no, you are not going to chase me out of this blessing that God has given to me. I forbid you in Jesus' name. Now, you do that. Now, let's even now say you, did, you took authority, you did all of that, and you still end up leaving that job. One thing you must know, remember what we talk about is in under, sub, under uh, subdue, I think, is what, where we say well, all things are yours. When you leave that job, don't start to say, oh, things are falling apart. Don't start to do conversation of victimization all over the place. Just say, to, just say God is taking, this job has, 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 I've lost this job, or this job has, I'm transitioning from this job, but a bigger and better one is coming. You know, and, and that mindset essentially is saying to you, nobody can withhold your good from you. You need to get to the point where you believe 100% that what belongs to you, nobody can take away from you. Nobody can withhold your good from you. If, if it is even stolen, a bigger and better one will come back to you. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Was that helpful? Yes. But actually using an example helps. Yeah. Okay. Who, has another, who, has, who wants to share another example? Let's, we, can, we can walk through that. No, that line I've used it before at work. Which one? Bigger and better is coming. Aha. Can you share, can you share your, your experience with us? If you, if yeah. you don't mind. Yeah. I won't go into details, but I remember when I lost my job and I did speak to you about it. And it was just a very trying period where it was like everyone was coming at me and it was there was just no break. And eventually when... I lost the job. I rem remember feeling so deflated. And, you know, I picked up the phone and I spoke to you. And you said those words, like, just say bigger and better is coming. And I remember just having a relief. And I prayed about it. I, I listened to, um, to a gospel music, to like a praise. And, you know, I had peace in my heart. And I just started confessing it. And truly, 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 bigger and better came, as in double portion. I can't even explain how, how wholesome, as in the, 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 the promotion, the speed, the, 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 the turnaround. It was bigger and better, way beyond my expect imagination. So, yeah, I believe. So when you were saying that bigger and better, it just resonated. I was just like, yeah, that's so true. Praise God. Praise Hello. God. Praise God. Please, please remember that we're not saying you're not going to face challenges, right? God did not promote that, right? But we must never, ever, ever look at life from a place of victim. Like, oh, we're victim. No, we're not. We're not. We're children of God. You know, we're children of God. We're seated together with God himself in the heavenly places. In, in the heavenly realm right now, you are seated at the right hand of Jesus, period. And that's who you are. Now, you may not accept that. You may not believe that. That's okay. We can walk through that and say, this is what the Bible says. Now, I understand that. But it does not change your position in Christ. Right? And the moment you know who you are in Christ, the moment you know what you said in Christ, the devil is in trouble. Because trust me, even when they throw stuff at you, you just know that, man, you're coming out on the other side. You're co the, the, the mindset of a victor is, even if I go through this challenge, I am going to come out on the other side, on scathe. On scale. No, no smell of smoke. No smell of smoke. Praise God. Actually, Pastor, can I give an example of the same thing? Yeah. When it comes to jobs. So years and years ago, I was in the job for 13 years. And then all of a sudden, a new um, CTO came in and decided to make everyone do my role redundant. Mm -hmm. Now, 13 years of being in the same job, you're very, your confidence can get knocked as to whether you can get another one. Hmm. But I must admit, at the time, when it all happened, I just thought, you know what, this is a blessing in disguise. I don't hmm. care what anyone tells me. I know I'm going to get something much better. And yeah. I, just had, I just had peace about it. And 
what happened next was somebody who had also been made redundant got a job recommended me gave them my cv and before i worked out my notice period i actually had another job lined up i didn't need to do anything so it's it's what you're saying is actually true it's a way of so when you kept on saying no sorrow i was trying to run through different examples of so what things have happened <laughs> and then actually i didn't feel any sorrow just trying to find practical examples mm. of that mm. so, that, that's my experience as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What what God gives us never brings sorrow. Never. Never brings sorrow. Yeah. If the sorrow comes into it, it's not God. It's the enemy that has done. You know, there's a scripture that Jesus Christ said in a parable when he said, a man plants a, a, man, a man goes to plant a, a field, and then when he wakes up one day, he finds that, you know, they, they found some, some weeds in the field. And he said, the enemy has done this. That's what you just kind of said. The enemy has done this, which means at times, you know, we might be oblivious, we might be sleeping, we might not even be doing anything. The enemy just tries to give you a curveball, right? And it is absolutely important what you do when the curveball is thrown at you. It's absolutely important because if you start to, the reason why the curveball is thrown at you is to get you to say what you don't want. Why? Because your royalty, I've said this in, in, when I said about dominion, I've told you now, your royalty, your words carry power. So when the enemy throws you a curveball, the enemy wants you to begin to say negative things out of your mouth. Oh, it's not going to work. Oh, things are so bad. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, blah, 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 blah. That's what the enemy wants you to say. Why? Because when you speak those negative words, you are basically, you have released a command into the atmosphere. That's what the enemy wants you to say. That's why in the parable of the sower, the Bible says, that on, on, on the rocky ground, when the seed was so strong in the rocky ground, the Bible says that um, this, the heat of the sun came to scorch it, you know, because the, the seed, when it fell on the rocky ground, has no moisture, has no root in itself. Therefore, it cannot grow. When the scorching sun came, the seed could not produce fruit. So essentially, they just kind of interpreted that parable and said, the person who is on who's got a rocky heart, this person who has had a word, is excited. But when persecution came or the pressures of life came for the sake of the word, it is a, it is the word you are believing God for. That's what the enemy comes for. So he brings that pressure to get you to begin to vocalize words of negativity, words of the devil out of your mouth. That's what he got. That's what is. That's what the sake of. That's what the pressure comes. The pressure does not come to say whatever. The pressure came to steal the word from you, to steal the promise from you, right? And therefore, God is saying to you, at times when the pressure comes and you don't know what to say, keep your mouth shut. Or the other one he says is this: every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. He does not say God shall condemn because God already condemned the devil. But he said, when the pressure comes against you, you shall condemn. You can say, no, you're not allowed here. I forbid you, Jesus. Said, you cannot come against my family. You cannot come, come against my health. You cannot come against my business. I forbid you in the name of Jesus. You need to take your authority. You need to say to any conversation that is trying to work against you, to say, no, shut up. You're not allowed here. So, and that is how you function in your dominion. You function in your dominion by knowing that the words you speak carry power, especially when things are looking like they are not going to work. God expect you to maintain the confession of your faith because everything is going to work together for your good. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So I think tonight I will not be able to um, go on into the multiple streams of income, but please next week, try and make it next week because I am going to be talking about this multiple streams of income in terms of, you know, um, the way God has designed the garden such that we are meant to have multiple streams of value, which means if, it, if, you, if you have somebody who is, who's got a gift in, in, in making food, that person can have multiple streams where they can make money. You have more than one way in which money flows to you. you know? So I will show you in the Bible how it is engineered in the, in, the, in the beginning and how we can tap into that. You know, I'll be doing that next week, right? Okay, so I know our time is up now. So let's say a word of prayer. If you want to roll off, uh, but you know, because our time is up, you can, you can roll off and then if you want to stay, if you don't want to stay for a bit of chit chat uh, till eight o'clock, uh, please, you can stay back. Father Lord, I just want to thank you tonight for uh, the gift of life. Thank you, Almighty God, for the ability to just share your word with your people. 
Lord, I pray, oh God, that we will take these words all my, and just run with them. I pray, oh my God, you will help us, oh Lord, to internalize and apply this truth in our lives to the point where, Lord, results will begin to manifest speedily, mightily among your people in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh my God, for everyone here and those who are going to listen to the recording later, that every, that oh my God, there will be, there will be such profound change and, 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 and turn around for good in their lives that it will draw people that they know, people that even are far off, they'll begin to say, show me your God who has done this for you. I thank you, Almighty God, that testimonies were bound in these people's lives in the name of Jesus Christ, that your name alone will be glorified. We thank you for it and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, 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 amen. All right, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Spirit, love of God, and the sweet fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy. God's goodness and mercy. All the days of our lives. All the days of our lives. In the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Your blessing, I favor. Please see you in church on Sunday. One, one last to say, please, on Sunday, there will not be communion on Sunday. I'm going to be traveling, right? But uh, see you in church on Sunday. Okay, we'll do communion next week, right? All right. Safe All right cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man talks. Okay, let me stop recording first. Hold on. Ah, Pastor Davis. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. I want to stop. I want to stop recording first. Give me one minute. This, this thing. Okay. Uh, Hallelujah. Oh. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Hi, Sharon. Hi. 